Welcome back to the vlog, guys. Welcome here to Hoskins, Papua New Guinea. We're heading over to the island of Candrian. Potentially to have some weather on the way, but we'll see. It's just a 28 minute flight over there. And then on to Medang for the rest of the day. So let's get started. Igniter's on, fuel pump on, fuel's on, and low start. I watch NG until it gets over 14%. And I introduce my low idle, basically adding fuel. I'll watch my NG coming over 35 and looking at the ICT, it peaks out at six. We filed for 8,000 feet and our weight was basically full up because we're a little over for taxi, but that's right, we've got 10 extra pounds just for our taxi fuel and then we'll be full straight up. So 1340 is what we'd put in. So we're at 7265, so we're just full up. So we're just gonna go 6375. So 75 for landing and 63 for rotate. All stations, Hoskins, 127 decimal one. Kodiak, November, Tango, Zulu. Taxiing for Candry, and we'll be on climb 8,000. Outbound track 224. Where's the 5565, November, Tango, Zulu, taxi? November, Tango, Zulu, one, go ahead. November, Tango, Zulu, taxi, Hoskins, Candrian, 2 POB. November, Tango, Zulu, no report of traffic. No, I've ever taken a zoom. I want you to zoom in there and see what the actual satellite right this minute is showing us. Is it showing us any rain on the way or what? If we go direct to Candrian or even just south and then west, we should be in really good shape. All right, sweet. Yeah. Let me take a look at that. Sometimes I just screenshot it so when we lose service, I can go back and look at it and go, oh, okay, that's what it was showing when we left. And that makes sense for what we're looking out the window for. All stations, Hoskins, November Tango Zulu, be back taxi and runway 30, Hoskins. All right, ignition condition, flaps 20, harnesses, 1540 for 1590, rotate at 63. All right, there's 1540, airspeed's alive, ITT's right at 720, that's good. Alpha and I'm already up to 63 knots. All right, well, we'll climb out at 85 knots. Oh, it's nice all that range has stayed off there. I mean, that's not even, not even 15 miles away. I mean, that's like probably like nine miles and it's just been sitting out there all morning long. Like, yeah, like it's like six miles away at most. And it just sits there. That's right where Wendy was forecasting. I know, right? Any light bypass and igniters turned off and we're ready to climb just at 100 knots. Up to 8,000. You can see there's like that big, huge buildup. That's gonna be probably our direct on track, which is pretty typical. It builds, that's where the highest mountains are straight ahead of us. Okay which are gonna be all this like lighter brown stuff. So we're just, I'm imagining we're just gonna probably just track a little bit to the left of that. Okay. That way we can get down on the other side of the island and then just track in where it's low, pretty much almost down to sea level so that we can start our descent a lot sooner. Otherwise we're kind of stuck there until like 10 miles out before we could even start our descent down because of the terrain. This track right here is probably about the track that we'll go on. Okay. So even if we had to, our minimum is 8,300, but like I said, I think that if we actually track about that, we'll just stay a little bit left of all those buildups so we can still just stay VFR, don't have to worry about getting stuck in it and then not being able to get down out of it. Orders V8861, November Tango Zulu, departure. November Tango Zulu, one go ahead. November Tango Zulu, no contact, any other frequency, departed, Hoskins on the hour, tracking two, two, three, up to one zero miles left of track, on climb 8,000, estimating Candrian 2.8. November Tango Zulu, copy on climb 8,000, confirm the deviation, one zero miles left of track. A affirmative, November Tango Zulu. What, uh, which one did you do? Is it over here? Zulu, uh, there we go. November Tango Zulu. So this is pretty typical right here. It's that big thing right there is where all the buildups are. So if we come here and then come over that way, then it usually works pretty well. All right, 6,000, couple thousand more to go. 
Looks like 8,000 is going to get us over most of it. Over on the left here. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, I think just right. Potentially there's more clouds. I can't tell if that higher layer over there is further back or if we'll have to go through that one too. I can't quite tell. I'm thinking, so what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at those clouds over there, seeing like how much they drop down, like over there, and thinking like how far do those other ones behind it look like they are. So potentially there's like a big, like it just stays at this layer or it drops down on the other side. Looking at the windy, I think it's gonna kind of even get more sparse on the other side of it. It's gonna get what? It'll get more sparse. I think it'll be more like a scattered to maybe a broken, but I don't think it's gonna be an overcast on the other side. Yeah, I don't even think this is gonna get us through right here if we, our minimum safe is 8,300? 84. Well, 84 for over here. Oh yeah, 84, so um, let's just pop back up a little bit higher. All right, there's our minimum safe just about. I think I said, I think it will open up over here on the other side of this. There, see how it just immediately dropped way down? I think it will just continue like that as we get around, but we'll see. All right, we're speeds up, coming up at least, now that we're off level at 8,400. And the reality is we'll probably need to start going down pretty soon. So that's why I want to get over here to the coastline so that we can just start going down knowing that there's no terrain below us. All right, our speed's up to 130, bring our torque back to 1250. All right, well, it looks like I can maybe, I barely just briefly saw the coastline over there. Even though we're at our minimum safe, we could go get on that track, but I think we're just gonna get stuck in the clouds for so much longer than if we were just to continue tracking off course. We're gonna break out way up here, as opposed to if we went on that track, we'd only have to go to 10 miles before we got to it, before you could even drop down to 3,800. Or once we get out here, whoops, where do we go? <laughs> once we get out here, we can just drop down along the coast and then fly in basically parallel. We've got a 3,100 feet way out here if we wanted to track inbound on that. There are some clouds right here though. It's all right. I think that Be we'll, honest. Okay. once we get closer, then we'll be able to just drop down. We'll drop down sooner if we come out the way we are. Looks like the highest ridges out on this half of the island are about 6,200 or 6,600 feet. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah, uh, those ones are right over there. Yeah. Uh, it looks like rain down below, so I'm guessing there's probably gonna be some rain in this one as well. It doesn't go up very high though. Not like the ones over here, and I guess that's probably where most of the rain's coming from, is that really high one right there. We can still see a lot of blue pointing out here, and it's not nearly as built as high as that one. The altitude was so I'm gonna throw my bypass in here. Sorry? The altitude was Josh blind whenever you got icy down here in the islands. Oh, probably like 14,000. So he was flying either back back and forth from Garoka. Yeah, uh, you don't get icing until you're probably like at least 13 and a half to 14,000. I assumed as such, but I just didn't know why he would be yeah. flying so high out here. Um, we do typically, like if I, let's just head over to that. It's a little bit bluer over there. I don't know, actually looks all right right here. Um, uh, I actually filed for flying back at 14, I think. I filed for 18 going back, but that was a few days ago. We didn't know what the weather was going to be like, and now it's just going to be pretty crap all the way. So, um, and it's going to be lots of clouds. I'm not even going to waste my time going to 18,000 because I know that if it's 12 degrees here, let's just say you lose, what is it, like three degrees Celsius per thousand feet. I know they're 4,000 feet higher than this. So 12, 13,000, we're gonna be getting lower. I don't think it'll be at 12. It's usually like 13 or 14. We're gonna be getting into those freezing levels and then we'll be picking up icing. So we, we brought enough fuel to fly back at 12,000. So we'll just do that. And that way we don't have to worry about it at all. All right, so we got our bypass on. We could throw pedo heats on, I usually do in the rain. It doesn't really help. Oh, it's nice. Look at that. It's so nice over there. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to go that way so that I can uh, start dropping down pretty soon. I think if we just get around this big cloud here, it might open up a little bit more. So then we can get down quick. 
And I'm just going to go on down to 8,000 now because we're now going down towards the coast. Go bypass off, pedo heats off, now that we're out of the rain. And this is why flying in the island sucks. Because it's like this every time you come, it seems. Really? There's always something that you're going to have to deal with weather-wise. It just makes it difficult to get all of your stuff done that you need to. Or we'll throw you an extra night over. All right, so this is about kind of where we will start our top of descent typically. Another way we can do it is to move this top of descent. What we can do is come up here, hit direct to, and then it'll reset our top of descent from wherever we are to be the same, you know? All right, yeah, see there I go. So now it's already clearing up and now we can start our descent down if we wanted to. So I'm just gonna start, cause it was at 800, I think. 830 at that point, so. All the way down to 1,300 feet for pattern altitude. Oh, if you can remember this, how we just came, and it's crummy weather out, that's the best way to go. Like it's so many times, it's like just like that, where you have tons of build up there, you get out here to maybe 10 miles to the coast, and then it kind of just breaks up and it just drops off, and then you can just wiggle your way all the way down into Candrian. Elevation is 300 feet. Ending runway 17 and 35. 17 is a slight hill. It says it's a 1.5% slope. It looks more like a three or more percent. Like, I don't, it looks just as steep as Garoka or even steeper. And Garoka's 3%, so I don't know how it's one and a half. We typically almost always land on runway 17 because it's slightly uphill and then the tack or the parking bay is at the top. So it just works out easier if you just do that. No landing penalties, no takeoff penalties. Parking bay is way up here by the tower, and it will take off the opposite way. And a lot of times there will be really strong, like quartering crosswinds and lots of wind shear and takeoff. We still take off with 10 knots of tailwind sometimes, and feels a bit squirrely, like, because the tailwind takeoffs just kind of feel weird as you get up airborne. But it's easier to take off that way than take off like a 3% slope uphill. It just feels uncomfortable because you take off and then you're you're climbing with the, the slight train so it doesn't feel like you're actually climbing you're like i'm still like two feet off the ground it looks better than what i was thinking it was gonna yeah, look yeah that doesn't look bad at all all right so pattern altitude's 1300 feet we'll fly overhead and then do a 180 to enter back into a left downwind runway 17. just tracking out here to the coast because i know that once i get to the coast clouds will just drop off and then I can just continue my descent really easily going all the way in. And we sure are blessed to be able to have the equipment that we have. Can you imagine flying the 206 20 years ago here? Oh. Had to fly like VFR. I think we had one of them over here that was IFR rated, but I mean with like a tenth of the situational awareness that we have in this plane. And just, I mean, it's like 11... We left at 11 o'clock, and if you would have been flying at 206, it would have already been like, all right, well, we're done for the day. You wouldn't be getting back to Groka. <laughs> that would really stink. All right, so it should be over there somewhere, kind of underneath. So this is really typical, too, how all the clouds are like 1,000 feet or maybe just right around that or maybe 800 feet. Right up to here, so our pattern might be a bit adjusted. All stations, Candrian 1271, November Tango, Zulu, one zero miles to the east, 2800, circuit time, Candrian 33. We'll be flying overhead for left downwind, 17 Candrian. All right, OBS, runway 170. Fly around this way and then just fly right over top of it and then enter into a downwind. I get down a little bit quicker though, otherwise I won't be able to get under these clouds. All right, our fuel selectors, the brakes are good, our taws will turn off. Morsby 8861, November Tango, Zulu. In the circuit, Candrian, cancel SAR. No, I'm looking a little more to take it. November Tango, Zulu is in the circuit, Candrian, cancel SAR. November Tango, Zulu, Candrian, SAR. November Tango, Zulu. It's over there somewhere. All right, there it is. There's a green patch with a little white building on it. Okay. That's the uh, airstrip. Oh, I see it now. All right, lights and inlet. We'll go ahead and start slowing down now. 
So yeah, we're a little bit lower than pattern altitude. 1,300 feet was pattern altitude. So what are we, 800 feet AGL? If you guys want to pick up one of these boxes, I've got two different types, backlit ones, which is this one, and then a non-backlit for like 152s, 172s, turbine engines you can use in the Kodiak or flight simulator stuff, or just like a generic kind of piston one you could use from a 210 all the way up to something like a multi-engine or something. All right, we're gonna enter in. We've got below 138 knots, 10 degrees of flaps. We're gonna turn final 800 feet. Looks like they're already here. And we're gonna land part way down because it looks like there's still some cones. Like last time I was here, there was a cone in the middle of the runway. We came 12 inches from hitting it. I was pretty irritated. <laughs> And it looks like there's still another cone. Still there. Another cone that's part way down, so we'll land just past that. 20 degrees of flaps. It's a little bit close, so I'm just kind of dog-legging out just a little bit. I'm already at 1,000 feet, so we'll just hold 1,000 feet until we turn our base. We'll slow on down to 84 knots, or 94 knots right here. There's 1.6 miles. i turn our base now. Drop 200 more feet. Going to 84 knots. About half had 10 knots of headwind. I'll add seven knots of crosswind. 500. So some potential. Oh, I'm, a, I'm gonna keep my altitude for a second because I don't want to land quite at the end. Full flaps checklist is complete. We'll land just past that little cone and then we'll ask them later to go down there and move it off, maybe. We just got four knots. We're just watching that just so that we know as we take off as well what we're planning on having for takeoff tailwind-wise. I see there's another cone like even further on up, kind of in on the right. reverse just because I don't want to pick up any rocks. I don't have to. Thanks guys for joining Brad and I on this flight over here to Candrian. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've got a lot more videos on this channel flying around Papua New Guinea and if you want to see some videos like on the ground at these kind of places I've got a link down below to Patreon where we walk around. Yesterday Brad and I were over at Goss Model looking over the airplanes and stuff, some World War II planes. So anyways, if you guys did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up and uh, Feel free to share this video with anybody else online. Alright guys, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.